Hello, my name is Matic and I will be showing you everything that needs to be known about the new active backplates for the RTX 3080 and 3090 series GPUs. What is it and why is it a breakthrough premium liquid cooling solution? I will also cover a step-by-step -step installation and in the end tips and tricks to help you speed up the process. Video is timestamped, so you can skip right away to the part that interests you the most. And remember, do not hesitate to contact our renowned support anytime you need it or have a question. With a new leap in evolution of the GPUs, a step up was needed in the cooling department. As the video memory was increased and the VRAM modules were added to the backside of the GPU's PCB, there was an increased demand to also actively cool the backside of the GPU. For that, you will need a new lineup of active backplates from the EK to keep the GDDR6X temperatures in check while performing at its peak. Active backplate is actually an entire water block but for the backside of the GPU. With a special terminal that replaces the one that comes with the front EK block, the coolant will be able to pass through the active backplate. We can see here that we have channels and fins for the coolant to pass right over the most heated part of the GPU's backside, the VRAM modules. Active backplate is made to match the existing EK water blocks, so if you already have one, this is a perfect upgrade for you. If not, hop onto the EK web shop and get yours today. But make sure to check which one is compatible with your GPU model. You can do this at this link. Before we begin, inspect the box content and make sure your product didn't get damaged in shipping. You may find the installation manual by scanning the QR code at the bottom of the box. Before we can continue with installation of the active backplate, we need to have the block installed as per installation manual. Make sure you tighten all the screws to compress the thermal pads on the block. Once all the screws are tightened, you can begin preparing the GPU for the active backplate installation by removing all the screws according to the active backplate installation manual. Do not forget to remove the stock terminal as well. For this next step, we need to cut the thermal pads to size and install them according to the installation manual. Be precise, as the tolerances are really, really tight. You must remove protective foil from both sides of the thermal pad before installation. In the end it should look like this. Keep in mind for this example we're using the Strix active backplate and the Strix block, so yours may differ a bit, depending on the GPU of your choice. One thing I need to mention is if you change the thermal pads to an aftermarket alternative, they might not be able to get compressed enough for the installation. EK thermal pads are soft and get compressed a lot and the blocks and active backplates are designed with that in mind. In this next step, we need to remove the blocking terminal metal plate and check that the o-rings are in place. Loosen all three screws and remove the set metal plate. Once you have removed the metal plate, please check that all the o-rings are in place. In order to ease the installation of the active backplate, please loosen up the three remaining screws on the terminal. Make sure that they are loose enough for the terminal to move a bit. Like this. Before we can finally put on the active backplate, please make sure that all the screw holes are aligned with the empty screw holes of the block. If you see they aren't aligned properly, please remount the block accordingly. Now we can finally install the active backplate. First, remove the three remaining screws in the terminal. Again, make sure that the O-rings are in place. Then slowly place the active backplate onto the block. Make sure that the RGB cable isn't interfering and that the holes are perfectly aligned. Next, we start by inserting the screws into the active backplate. Do not fully tighten them at first, just place them in. Ok, now fully tighten these screws in a cross pattern. Check that the active backplate is resting on the PCB. 
screws must be properly tightened and thermal pads properly compressed. As you can see that standoffs are touching the PCB from both sides. Now for this next step, we check if the three screw holes on the terminal are aligned. As you can see they haven't perfectly aligned yet, so in order to do so, loosen the screws on this side of the active backplate and make sure that the screws on the terminal side of the active backplate are all tightened in. Squeeze the block a bit and the holes should align. Once they are threaded in, make sure to tighten them in a cross pattern, but don't over tighten them. And remember, since we loosened all the screws on this side of the active backplate, tighten them all in to ensure the proper contact with the VRAM. And there you have it, the active backplate is safely installed to the GPU. For more content like this, make sure you comment, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay cool! Tip 1. Use two micro HDP fittings and a piece of hard tubing to connect two GPUs with active backplate together. Tip 2. The particular shape of the active backplate was made to have clearance with most motherboards and RAM sticks. Check your motherboard for compatibility. Tip 3. Make sure to use proper ports on the terminal as per the installation manual. It is possible to rotate the terminal 180 degrees. Tip 4. Check that the LED strip is working before you mount it onto the GPU. The LED terminal cover will not fit over the active backplate terminal. Tip 5. Squish the thermal pads on small components with your fingers. Tip 6. Test that the GPU performs and functions as intended before mounting the water block.